so let's start by looking at what uh, Seattle has been doing. So I have a video for you, uh, which is possibly will remind you of your, uh, your trip so far. It shows what's happening in, this, in the city of Seattle. And there's some very amazing music which goes with this week. <laughs> 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 so, what you'll see is a lot of logos of companies which are not just formed here in Seattle, but also moving here from the Bay Area, international as well. <coughs> and we see both biotech, which you look at as, as well as IT and big engineering, like, like Boeing, for example. And it's also a place for the top foundations. So you have uh, uh, Gates Foundation and Path as well, and retail, as you can see from Amazon and Starbucks and Costco. So it's an intersection of four or five technology areas that all are coming together in Seattle. So it's a very exciting time. The role of the university is to create talent for these companies, but also to figure out how to connect to this ecosystem and build an even larger and more diverse ecosystem which can you know, withstand business cycle challenges and also diversity of, of uh, technologies. As we go across the water towards the Bell area, we're also seeing companies, of course Microsoft, but also other companies in the IT space as well. So it's really a burgeoning area, some statistics. I think the latest number, and, and the city will have that more, but at least 150 uh, Bay Area companies have set up their tech offices here. They are moving here for, for tech time. So what is the role of, of uh, the university? You are in this building, and what we are trying to do at the university is to spawn innovation across the entire campus. We have about 50,000 students on campus. We have 18 different colleges. We have three campuses. Uh, we have a computer science department, which is really top five. School of Medicine, which is top rated. Amazing law school, business school. Now the challenge is how do we leverage all of this talent to create innovation across the board. Innovation not just in terms of startup companies, but for large companies to innovate, uh, for companies that are trying to change their business models, and moving from just technology to also social innovation. Uh, becoming more and more important. So we do this through uh, Promotion, which is where you are now, which is our innovation hub at the University of Washington. Innovation is such an overused word that we try to define what exactly are we doing. So it's really three things that we do at Promotion. One is about transfer. That we have $1.3 billion of research in the university per year. Uh, how do we take these ideas out into the real world? To start up companies, to patents and licenses, to organizations. That's innovation transfer. Innovation learning is how do you get this mindset of taking risks, learning from failure, working in teams, working in the industry, into any student, faculty member, postdoc, or alumni who wants to do this. It's a big challenge because we have about 100,000 people who are trained activists in the university. So how do we do this at scale while respecting what, for example, our Foster School of Business does in terms of MBAs around uh, entrepreneurship? How can we do this for everyone who needs that? And the third is around strategy. Uh, universities are always evolving. Uh, for state universities, the challenges are around state funding, around federal funding, around research, and also about keeping our education current. What are we teaching our students so that it's not just the skill sets of the day or it's not just the knowledge of that time, but something that they'll use for the next 15 or 20 years? What is it that we should be teaching? And how do we do that collaboratively with, with partners and, and companies? So that's, that's the three things that, that we're doing in the, uh, here at Promotion. And I was told this is a very chatty group, so please interrupt at any time. So far, I'm not seeing any evidence of that. <laughs> Feel free to interrupt and raise your hands. This slide, I mean, this is a, a slide around the types of innovation. I think it's, it's good to think about when we say innovation, what it means. And it's not just about technology, but these are technology examples. When we think of innovations coming out of the university, we tend to think of breakthroughs, you know, new cancer cure, or potential cancer cure, or a new form of energy. Uh, fission or fusion. Those things come every two decades, every three decades, and of course we have to create conditions for that. But more than that breakthrough innovation, what we see are new market innovations, where you take an idea which works in a certain segment, move it to a new segment, whether it's a new country, a new economic sector, a new application. Sustaining, which uh, our companies are down and great at, take something which has worked and keep pushing it, pushing the limit. For example, the uh, internal combustion engine of the Ford Model T is essentially the same physics of the BMW 5 Series um, engine, but imagine the differences in, in sustaining that to get to that point. Now, the Tesla electric is a disruption. Right? It's an 
So sustained innovations are as important. And then disruptive are those which come from the bottom, surprise you, which looks sort of cheap and dirty to start with, but over time they just keep taking more of more your market and it's before it's too late and other people uh, don't respond. So this is happening in the shared economy space uh, a lot now. So all these kind of innovations are happening at the university as well. One of the, the big things in, in universities is that we need an ecosystem which is not just a research lab. The research labs are great for getting federal funding. The mindset of the startup, as we all know, is very different from a research lab. So the way we do that is to create a separate entity, which, is, which are called our promotion labs, which have a total of about 82 startup companies, in, in these incubators. Uh, behind you, in the door behind you, is, is a focused area around virtual reality uh, and augmented reality. This was based on looking at what emerging topic in Seattle is something where all areas of strength are coming together, content, hardware, software, platforms, and augmented reality, virtual reality is being one. We have 17 startup companies in that area. Um, we have another incubator focused on biotech. The challenges around biotech, as you may have heard earlier today, are the, life, the, the timelines. Like you put a lot of investment, you have to go through FDA, you have to do testing, and so you need sustainable space and testing. We do that in an incubator which has wet lab space. And on the flip side is software, which is very low uh, capital cost. You can get started right away. So we took an old law school building. The joke is it was the ugliest building on campus. And now it's the most sought after space inside it for these IT startups. And we have about 30 startups in, in, in there as well. The new thing we are doing from our viewpoint is what we call an inclusion, which is taking technologies into non-traditional spaces. So an example is we have a drone company, which is uh, the name of the company is Drone Seed. And it has a swarm of drones which goes into a forest and can reseed forests by shooting seeds in a certain seeding pattern. Right? So you can imagine you go into a forest which is difficult to navigate, you send these drones in, and you can do everything from irrigation to, to seeding. Uh, there are other examples of this around the winemaking industry, around the timber industry. So that's where we are seeing sort of the, the challenge around taking old industries, combining new technologies to create an economic. Uh, viable climate. So those are really the four labs and there's about 82 startups in there. So what does what does the labs do? What does an incubator do? It's probably another very overused word. So the first thing we think of when you have an incubator are space, so everything from desk to wet labs to dry labs to <coughs> technologies. But what we are finding is of course that the network and the learning is as important, even more important. And this is where we get our best bang for the buck. When we connect to venture capital not just here, but in the Bay Area. We have seen more and more investment also from uh, across the Pacific, from China. When we connect to uh, best practices in learning, we have amazing entrepreneurs in, in town. They come and teach our uh, budding entrepreneurs, and you'll see a couple of them in the panel. And then, of course, services around uh, providing. How do you create a company? How do you, you know, can you get legal advice? Can you get early customers? So all of that is provided to, to these uh, companies. So as an example of what's happened in these incubators, the total uh, fund, uh, funds raised by the lab incubators are more than 100 million in, in angel and VC capital. Um, there's 82 startups currently, and uh, the good part is also the students coming to these lab, labs as well. So it's students, it's entrepreneurs all working together in that one space. It's a bit of a disruption for a university which is based on education and research labs to think of this new mode of being where you're actually creating products. It's a great way for students to, to engage and to create jobs here in Seattle. Uh, just some more rankings that we're very proud of. Recently, the Thomson Reuters looked at innovation across all universities in the world. We were number five overall, and number one most public. The others were all private universities, Howard, Stanford, MIT were above us. And these are different uh, numbers. This comes every 10 years, looking at technology transfer, we're number seven in, in that as well. So the combination of the amazing research that our, our faculty do, and then ways to take that research and build products is, is what we are uh, trying to do at, at scale. I'll also talk about a companion project that we are doing, which is across the water in, in Bellevue. And this is about taking the idea of uh, creating startups, but doing this now in collaboration with multiple universities and multiple industries at the same time. So this is a network of universities in, in an industry, Tsinghua University, which is the top engineering school in the world from, from uh, Beijing is part of this network. This is launching this year. 
Uh, it's a master's program, but the goal is not to get a degree as much as to end up with a product or a startup or a potential uh, disruption which will go into a company. So uh, the mission there is, is threefold. It's developing leaders in innovation. The, the hypothesis we are basing this on is that there's a new mindset that even large companies are looking for, where yes, you are excellent in your deep area. You might be a coder, you might be a business person, but you also need to understand many other things, how to work with multiple cultures, how to work with cross-disciplinary teams, how to make decisions, and you don't have all the information of so entrepreneurial decision making. So we are trying to create that mindset in these students. And it's, uh, we can have a whole talk on the number of boundaries we have to cross and the intellectual property challenges around that. So these multiple universities from multiple countries, potentially sensitive technologies around connected devices, IoT, multiple industry funding these projects, and potentially in the project are students who are working for other industries. So you can imagine all the crossings that we're doing to, to create these products. But the benefit is when you have this much diversity, you get a lot of uh, amazing ideas coming out. And the goal is around healthcare sustainability and uh, social equity and the, and the challenges that will be posed. So these are the four areas. <coughs> no surprises, but and I think you probably just saw this in your last uh, meeting. Um, so the first area that is around IoT, so this, this has a business, law school, computer engineering, electrical engineering, and the design school all working together on how do you take all these amazing connected devices, which are very low cost now, with the cloud backend, understanding user behavior, and how do you create systems or devices or technologies that can impact one of the areas of health and sustainability. So that's our first program, a 15 month masters that is launching. And then we'll be looking at health, particularly M health, intersection of data and devices, uh, clean energy, uh, what's called hardware in the loop. So you, you can do a lot of simulations where you understand the impact of hardware being there, whether it's electric cars, whether it's batteries, whether it's uh, wind, uh, wind power, but you're able to do a lot with the te <coughs> technology. And one of the most interesting things, which I think Seattle is poised to be a leader in, is how do you look at cities of the future, not just from the smart city side, which a lot of people are doing, but understanding things like the impact of the environment, social equity, policy. So this is a cross-disciplinary program with policy, as well as uh, uh, social sciences. So these are the four programs that, that we are at. So Comotion um, tries to prioritize all of these ideas and do it in a way that's a value add for all our faculty, our students, and our staff. But I think the best way to get the story will be to have three of our folks come and talk about it, and they're sitting right here. Uh, so if we can, I think this is my last uh, slide. So this is, again, these are things to take away from what we are trying to do. Again, the goal is, Innovation defined broadly, I think this is a new thing for understanding for a lot of us is it's not just about entrepreneurship. It's great, entrepreneurship is great, but a lot of good jobs happen in large companies. And you don't necessarily want entrepreneurs, but there's some something in that mindset about creating internal innovation groups in large companies that you can teach uh, teach here, crossing every kind of boundary, and then addressing challenges that, that matter. So we are looking at uh, large challenges around health, healthcare, sustainability, and, and social. So, Yes, questions. How would you like to work with us? How would you like us to work with you? Very direct question, I like it. Um, <laughs> so, we, so currently there's seven universities in this network. And so when you say us, we're, we're representatives of governments around the world. Right, so where can I start? There's so many things that we need, right? <laughs> The very simple way is to say, are there universities in your countries that are interested in connecting to this network? So we reached out to China, we have Israel, we're talking to India, we're talking to uh, Hong Kong, Singapore as well. So the question is, are there universities which would be, part, be interested in being part of this network? And what does network mean? Faculty exchange, student exchange to start with, but also if there are industry partners in those uh, universities that would like to do a project here. So that's the simplest way to get started. Bigger things would be if there are cross-cultural problems to be looked at. So we've been looking at, for example, the innovation, <coughs> hardware innovation ecosystem in Shenzhen, in China, which of course is, is amazing, but how do you connect that back to technology development here? So it's a supply chain challenge, it's, it's a financial <coughs> challenge. So if there are interesting cross-linkages of innovation ecosystems, that would be great. You know, whether it's uh, an emerging ecosystem or a large ecosystem. The one question we're all struggling with is the future of technology and what's going to happen with 
technology disruption, AI, machine learning. If there are thought leaders or if there are test cases of what people think will happen in that country, we'd love to use that as a test case to, to look at things as well. Because that, I think, is, is real. This time it's real, as, as the joke always goes. But uh, I think the latest prediction is by 2040, about 40% 40 of jobs which exist now will not exist just because they'll be disrupted. So how do we actually you know, define the jobs of the future and the workforce of the future? So, so I think connecting to you know, universities and also policy people will be there. You can reach out to any, anyone here at Commotion. We are, the joke is we are the least bureaucratic part of the university. <laughs> <laughs> and our university is not bureaucratic at all. Anyway. <laughs> Other questions? Yes? Uh, one of your slides uh, was uh, detailing what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, numbers you were starting. Right. And one of the, uh, one of the things uh, listed was uh, rent. Now, there's a couple of philosophies that you uh, grant and other uh, you know, outside funding sources that are not you know, venture capital, but uh, detrimental to the uh, scale up of some of the stuff that are right. having to do. Excellent question. Uh, we've seen both, so you know, there are government grants, typically small business grants. If designed wrongly, they take the company off onto a tangent, and you become a consultant or a service provider. When done right, and there are certain agencies who are encouraged to actually help the startup rather than to create a project. So for example, the National Science Foundation is actually focusing on get your company successful, which help you get money, which is equity free towards them. So there are right ways to do that and wrong ways to do that, so absolutely. So, so when done right, up to a half a million to a million you can get, where you're not really constrained in terms of moving away from your product, but it gives you a way to create a product and to create value before you have to get a great question. I think you know, just adding a brand to a, a startup could be done. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about this, are you uh, uh, in the uh, SBIR and SBIR? Uh, exactly. And it's interesting. Every different uh, division has a different mindset around it. Yeah. So Department of Defense is different from NSF. Different, you know, and so you really have to work with these particular program managers for them to understand. What that's great. Yes. Uh, in September 2015, you know, during the Chinese president Xi Jinping's visit, we started a program, University of Washington and the Tsinghua University and Software, that is a, a 